Good morning. Welcome to worship at First Congregational Church of Kittery at Kittery Point, United Church of Christ. We are a welcoming spiritual community anchored in love and growing in faith. It is our mission in this place to inspire spiritual growth, to nurture all families, and embrace our wider community. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, you are welcome here. It is a joy to celebrate worship with you this morning in praise of our God. And so the theme of our service this morning is rejoicing. We will rejoice in just a moment, but first an apology. An apology to our YouTube followers. We're not live right now on YouTube. As soon as the service is over, we'll be able to upload our video and people will be able to worship with us online. This is We have these very fancy, sharp, brand new cameras. And Jennifer and I have labored tirelessly this week, and I'm glad to tell you, they work perfectly. There's just one setting that we could not fix this morning, so we're, we're going private on YouTube. Next week, it will be public, so people can actually follow us live. But for today, we're recording and putting it up. So we apologize, but we don't apologize too much because it's new and it's fancy and it's amazing. So a uh, huge thanks to Jennifer for everything she's doing, including sitting back in the roving room with my phone right now, making sure that everything is sounding good and looking good. Uh, huge thanks to Billy Bell uh, for always providing such special music. But today especially, you'll, you'll, you'll be glad to know you're going to hear very little from me today. You'll hear a lot more from Billy. She's going to help lead us in our time of, uh, of the sermon, delivering the word through music. We are also celebrating Leslie for ringing the bell, as always. Thank you so much. And we celebrate Kristen for being our deacon and our liturgist this morning. Thank you so much for being here with us. And thank you to all of you who are here in the sanctuary with us. What a joy to celebrate on this gorgeous, rainy, cooler day. What a blessing it is. Just a couple things to lift up. You should know by now that in order to follow what's happening here at our church, your best bet is to be subscribed to our our church um, e-newsletter that we call The Mooring. Jennifer sends out three notices a week on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And so if you are ever curious about what's happening here or what time or how, um, always check in. And if you're not getting them in your email, please call us. Get in touch with me, get in touch with Jennifer. We will sign you up and make sure that we figure out how to make you receive that regularly. This week, the big thing I know you'll see more about is we are preparing for our blueberry and Craft Festival on August 14th. And we're excited to announce from the Blueberry Crew that our first pie-making workshop will be this upcoming Saturday. I believe I have that right. Uh, so look for details in the morning, but uh, make sure that you set aside some time to come and help bake pies. Pam, do I have that wrong? This, I just got an email before it came. Excellent. It said Thursday. Thursday, thank you so much. I could be wrong. I could be wrong too. But Pam, I really appreciate you speaking up and saying it. So again, check your mooring because Jennifer will certainly have the, the appropriate, the correct details in the mooring tomorrow. But so either, either Thursday or Saturday or somewhere in between, we're making pies this week. So get ready to come over and help make some pies. There's jobs for everybody, everything from uh, crust building to pouring sugar. I know last year, Rowan and I, we were in charge of lemon zest, I believe. So there's tons of jobs for everybody. Even a, a one-year-old can help out. So please plan on being there and celebrate this amazing work that we do as church. One more quick thing to say before we officially begin. Thank you to everyone who donated diapers and wipes and um, and diaper cream and all these things, uh, blankets, some beautiful, gorgeous newborn blankets to give to this family who just gave birth to twins a couple weeks ago. Thank you so much for the generosity that you share as church. You are helping to provide a lot of security and a lot of love and joy for this family uh, with these newborn twins. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And with all that being said, we do rejoice. It is a gorgeous day and God has invited us here to rest and recharge and renew. So I invite, uh, I believe, let me check my bulletin. Yes, I would like to invite Kristen Ford to lead us all in our responsive call to worship that you'll find in your world. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, please join me for the call to worship found in your bulletin right underneath the welcome. We gather together, bringing our aches and pains. Uh, us to come and rest. We have come to tell God about all we have done and taught. 
God looks upon us with compassion, like sheep without a shepherd. We bring before the divine our sickness and imperfections. God touches our wounds and we are healed. In this time of worship, let us give and receive. We offer to God our gifts and treasure, and we receive new life from the God of life. Creator God, you call us to love and serve you with body, mind, and spirit through loving your creation and our sisters and brothers. Open our hearts in compassion and receive everything we offer you in this time of worship. Amen. And it is a joy to gather together to offer our prayers to God, whether they be prayers of concern and sorrow, or prayers of rejoicing, prayers of joy and celebration. Um, and so we invite uh, anyone who's watching this video, as always, you're invited to type your prayers into the comments section on the video, and we will do our best to collect those prayers for next week. And anyone who is here physically present with us, we would invite you at this time to share any prayers that you hold in your hearts. Christine. I'd like to share prayers of rejoicing for the new children being born into this world and the grandchildren and great-grandchildren that a number of people are receiving into their families now. What a joy. Children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. What a blessing. Thank you, Christine. Suzanne. Uh, joy of celebration. My nephew got his RN in a certified uh, in Florida. So uh, it is special for his dad passed away a year ago of Parkinson's and didn't see it happen, but I'm very proud of my nephews. Chris, well, congratulations to Chris, a newly minted RN, and thanks be to God for his service. That's wonderful. Thank you, Susan, for sharing that. Mary Jane, did I see your hand? Yes. Um, you know, prayers for all of those people who are suffering from floods and on the opposite coast from fires. We know that we are living in a dangerous time with our changing weather patterns, and we pray for those who are in harm's way from flood and drought, famine, all the, all the major disasters that we are aware of, racking our own country, let alone the world. Thank you, Mary Jane. I offer a prayer of joy for a wonderful friend, Diane, who is joining us today in worship. Diane has been here, here with us many summers now. She was a dear friend of my dearly departed grandma, Mary Lou, and uh, it's always so special to see you, but especially now, this is the first time I've seen you since grandma passed, so it's so wonderful to reconnect with you. Thank you for your presence here. Stella. Uh, Rejoicing family gatherings, and uh, two of my kids from the West Coast, daughter and son. Uh, one is from the West Coast. We haven't seen him for two years because of COVID. And they've just been with us the last two weeks. So they've been a lovely family gathering. Thank you. Well, thank you for sharing. We, we celebrate family gatherings, um, especially in this summer when we've been so disconnected and so far apart for so long. Thank you for sharing that joy stuff. I also offer a prayer of joy for all of you we're seeing in here for the first time since we started worshiping in person. What a joy to receive you and to have you here. And all of you who have chosen to come back, it's uh, this, we're in this very bizarre time where we don't know what works, we don't know what doesn't, we're trying to do our best to be safe, and we, we so appreciate the patience and the community and the teamwork um, that we experience here as we are just trying our best in this brand new world. Um, so thank you all so much. Friends, join me in a short moment of prayer. Holy God, you alone were at the dawn of creation. You alone stand at the end of all things. We trust as people of faith that you gather up everything in between. 
reconciling it to yourself, making all the diverse, chaotic cosmos that you set in motion as one. On this day, we ask that you help us to feel your grace, to experience your loving presence beginning inside our own bodies. Where we feel anxiety because of the woes of the world, we ask that you bring calm and rest. where we experience joy and celebration for the gifts of new life, reconnection, achieving big things, serving others. We ask that you amplify that joy in our bodies, that it might be shared with others. As you bring us together in this place as one, Whisper to each of us a word of comfort, a word of hope, and empower us in the days to come to discern together how you call us to be one body as your church in this place. It's during this short time together that we also celebrate offering our gifts. We don't offer prayers alone, we offer gifts alongside them. Because God has gifted each of us in particular ways. If you have been gifted financially and you have the ability to make a contribution, either in the offering plates on the, on the gorgeous table that John Thomas made in honor of his dearly departed wife, um, you are welcome to do that at the end of the service on your way out. Folks can also make financial contributions through our website, kitterypointucc.org. You'll find a big donate button right on the front page, of, uh, front page of our website. It is truly a gift. Anything that you have to offer, it helps us to stay here on the corner, being God's people in this place. And if you do not have a financial contribution to make, God has entrusted you with particular gifts that this world badly needs. So during this time, as we receive Billy's gift of music, we invite you to rededicate yourself to taking what you've been given and donating it to God's work of justice and love in this world. Let's join together now in our time of honor.
Gracious God, receive the prayers we offer to you, receive the gifts that we offer in your service, and remind us once more who you are for us and who you call us to be as we pray together using the words that Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is very easy to follow because it's right here in your bulletin. You don't need to go searching for other Bibles in your pews. We can just read this together. And as we read this, I invite you to pay special attention to what is happening with people's bodies in this story. All throughout the month of July, we are celebrating how we find the sacred in our very own bodies. So pay attention to what is happening with folks' bodies as we read this together. This comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 through 34, and verses 53 through 56. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplace and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Take a brief moment to check in with your body. What are you noticing about it today? Where are the aches and the pains? Is there any sign of joy and happiness? Is your breathing deep or shallow? Is your mind racing away from your body? Or is it coming to rest, to be present here? When Jesus' apostles gather with him, they can't wait to tell him about all the things they've been doing, all the things they've been teaching, and he simply says to them, rest. Come away to this deserted place and rest. He doesn't chide them. He doesn't tell them they're not doing enough and they're doing it wrong. He doesn't compliment them. He doesn't say, congratulations, how wonderful. He says, rest. Rest your body. Rest your mind. Be still. Eat, nourish yourself. 
This work we do together as church, this work that we are called to do to love and serve others as ourselves, it can only happen if we know how to love and serve ourselves. If we can pay attention to what's happening within us. I won't bore you with the story, but everyone here knows I have had a very tough year. And what I have learned mostly about my situation is that it started as a diagnosis with a mental illness, but I recognized that mainly it had to do with my body. It had to do with the ways I was not checking in with my own body. These bodies of ours and these minds, they have been designed to react to all kinds of stimuli, whether it be positive or negative. Primarily what we do is we receive information and we react. So I hear Jesus' words today very personally, and I invite you to do that as well. Do you know what's happening with your body and your mind? Can we rest together? It seems to me the fact that Jesus' focus is on rest and healing and nourishment, it seems to me that Jesus primarily wants us to be ready to react, wants us to be healthy and alive and awake to react to what God is doing in the world. Which means we have to know how to reset ourselves. We have to know how to let go of the aches and the pains that happened yesterday, last month, years ago. And we have to know how to recognize the gifts, the joys that God brings into our lives every minute of every day. And that's what I would like for us to explore today, friends. I believe that prayer is the practice that resets our bodies. Prayer is the practice of opening ourselves up to the divine, to check in, to see what's happening with us, and allow God to call us beyond ourselves. We're going to take just a few moments today to pray together, not in a way that you might expect, Because I want us all to have an experience of practicing this resetting of ourselves. So when we leave the space, whether it be the sanctuary or your home, you might feel a sense of being reset. Our child was born just over two years ago. I have firsthand, very fresh experience. I can tell you this, when we get here on this earth, we are not filled with anxiety. We are simply filled with bubbly joy. Even when their needs aren't being met, they'll cry, they'll cry, and then as soon as their needs are met, ah, everything's fine. And they're so joyous, they invite all those around them to be fresh in that joy as well. There's a reason why Jesus said, allow the little children to come to me. These little children have a better chance of inheriting the kingdom than adults do. Because for us, it's the hard work of resetting. One simple story before we pray together. This comes to us from our friend Polly, a member here who lives across the street. She and her husband Tom went away with their grandchildren for the 4th of July. And Polly told me this week that their grandchildren, their grandson specifically, was so excited for fireworks on the 4th. Oh, could not wait, was talking about it all day, couldn't wait to just go out and be amazed at these brilliant colors and these loud noises. And of course, if you were here in the area, you know, it poured. It rained and poured and the fireworks were delayed. And Polly said she saw her little grandson, I think he's all eight years old, just be so dejected. Oh, he was crushed by this. And it was all she could do to convince him to just go out Let's go out the way we would to watch the fireworks, and let's just see if we see anything fun. So they went out, they were up at camp, they went out to their dock, they sat out looking across the lake, and out of nowhere, they weren't official fireworks, but somebody had fireworks. Boom, 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 boom. 
Bright and brilliant colors, loud noises. The kids were thrilled. Imagine being that little child. Imagine what his body went through that day. Great excitement, great expectations for these fireworks. Great disappointment and sadness and sorrow with the rain canceling the fireworks. A lot of pondering and wondering and being really, mm, I don't care about anything anymore. And then suddenly more excitement. I'm exhausted just acting that out. That takes it out of me. We are no different than those children. We just have things in our lives that we get dejected or excited about that might be a little bit beyond fireworks. So friends, I have invited Billy to prepare some music to hold us while we all sit quietly in this space to check in with ourselves, with the disappointments we've experienced, the great joys we've experienced, everything we're carrying with us right now, today, this moment, and let's see if a time of silent prayer together, being held by this music, might help us to reset so we can be prepared to go beyond these doors and receive what God has waiting for us next.
very quickly. During that time, I was able to reset enough to remember that we have a very important prayer to offer this morning. Uh, on behalf of Reverend Beth Hoffman, her son Gabe is going in for surgery at, uh, down in Boston later this week. And I do encourage and, and beseech each of you to hold Beth and the entire Hoffman family and Gabe in your prayers, that they may have opportunities to rejoice at the end of this journey. Beloved, rejoicing is our default setting. It is my hope that each of us can go forward from this place knowing the peace and love of God. And if but a short while, rejoice like a newborn babe on this beautiful day God has made. Go in peace.